When we finally unearth the Fargate, what will we get running on it first? Linux or Doom? Can it be Kitty Cat That's Doom? my question to you. <laughs> Kitty Cat Doom, yes. I mean, it can be whatever Doom you want. And welcome back to another Linux Gamecast Weekly, the show that covers the latest Linux gaming news, reviews, how-tos, and most importantly, whatever the hell else we come up with. I'm Vin, that's Jordan. Over there is one Pedro Mateus. And together with you, Shadow Realm Dynamic, joining us live, helping us form a slightly faster cocaine Voltron. Yeah. Oh, man. RTX on, baby. <laughs> no, we, we can't afford it. Jensen has ah. forbade it. <laughs> oh, so it's just you can't tracing. buy any okay. RTX cards right now. So. <laughs> the, the jacket will show up and snuff your ass out, son. So what's up? What's new? I've been playing around with a few things. Uh, if you watch the show we do on Wednesday. I finally got a rack. I understand that no one cares about that, but I've been waiting on this damn rack for a year. It's an audio <laughs> rack for preamp I bought over a year ago because I felt one used on Guitar Center, and it was the uh, Golden Age Pre-73 Junior. It's a weird, weird little lamp, and um, I went to get a rack for it, and it was out because, hey, guess what? COVID and dropped in, and um, finally, finally, after much patience, I was able to put little red racking hood in and... Um, put the amp in there looked at it and it came with a bag of candy okay <laughs> that's the important bits bag of candy because if you order something from sweetwater frank's got it now he's got it in this little pumpkin over here um mm, he's, he's gonna trick or treat you get candy and that that will be in there forever i'm guessing candy has a pretty decent shelf life outside of that i finished much, up the yeah. uh, black magic 4k review that's been up for patrons for about a week to look at and um our web zone might be a little bit faster because I finally got the asynchronous caching system working and playing nice with Cloudflare. So I'm like, yay, bonus sodas on that. What are you laughing at, Pedro? <laughs> I was just reading Game of Thrones comment about, uh, I'm not sure how to say nice rack, Ven, without sounding creepy. There you go. You, you, I did it for you, you. say it like this. <laughs> hey, Ven. Yes. Nice cans. Thanks, Orca. <laughs> We're talking about a can, Pedro. Get your mind yeah. out of the gutter. I was, I, was, I was talking about his headphones. What are you talking about? <laughs> no, I, I was just reading Discord, but no. Uh, over here, the um, as you probably spotted, the Apogee Duet. It's uh, it, I bought it broken, and I redid all the obvious hotter points that I could see, but that didn't fix it. There's uh, still a weird bug that shows up after it's been running for a while where it just crashes. Pedro, how are you and then using takes... Apogee Duet on a modern computer? It, yeah, go figure. <laughs> yeah, it, apparently it's the wrong Firewire card too, but uh, the, the replacement for that is already on the way. Uh, th this one, it, it, it's insane because when it crashes, it takes Ulsa down with it. It's as impressive that that well considering yeah. <laughs> considering I, the the trail of breadcrumbs for this thing really follows back to oh okay I walk Pedro through and like okay get Fado installed already blacklist the modules do all this the, like two minutes later it it froze what froze whole thing all of it <laughs> like the whole system <laughs> that might have been hit number one that it might be a, just a wee defective but there might be a fix for it but. Let this serve as a warning. If you hang around with me long enough, you're going to turn into a Firewire audio interface using Hipster. Uh, and I, I, I have to, the, the thing that I noticed the most was after I gave up on that, it's like, okay, no, it, it is proper broken. I'm going to have to have a look at it again. And I went back to the Apogee one and I was listening to the same songs. It's like, no, that sounded a heck of a lot sounds, better. You, yeah. You, you try <laughs> to explain to people. Yes. This, this interface from, you know, it's like, 400 pounds back in the day and back in the days what 2007 um the preamps yeah. the preamp and the headphone amp in that thing is just like that sounds it's different. really good <laughs> it, it is it, like uh i don't know i said this on discord but i don't know the the audio file terms for it but like all of the higher pitch stuff like the higher frequencies they sounded clear i could actually make out like different instruments and stuff that i could never hear before i i don't know if that's that, like what the that's audio what, files call crisp something i tried to explain to you at one point <laughs> like you're hearing details in the song that you did not know were there yeah <laughs> it, it that's that 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 is a legitimate thing so Small i gotta you have to i gotta fix it because i'm hooked your now. System. <laughs> yes jordan are you trying to get ahead 
Oh, uh, I mean, I, I, I got, I got two. I got. <laughs> I, 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 I got Jed and I got Ted. Um, yeah, these are. Um, you might, you might remember these. The masks came from uh, Mr. Fox Dog. I had them on my wish list. I went to a craft store and I bought these uh, styrofoam heads. I told you to buy a third one. I think the heads one. look creepier by themselves. You to be should have bought a third one because you can take those. I know this from personal experience. Uh, pop them in the microwave and they go, they turn into shrinky dinks. I mean, I, I don't know if it's going to make all the food I cook in there afterwards taste like styrofoam head, though. Worth so. it. Is it is it really? No, at I'll, least for the well, first couple of times, yeah, definitely. Yeah. So, so I, I, bought, I bought some plaques as well. I'm, I'm putting together the uh, the mounts for. Uh, it'll go up there eventually. I gotta just play around with some stains and see what looks the best. I noticed on Pedro's new drill kit, he had um, some mortar bits. I'm like, yeah, so that's mm-hmm. how you I drill. Do. Kit <laughs> yes. Yep. Uh, one, one, one other thing I noticed is because I've been the one uh, walking the dog for a while, like. I don't, I don't know if you can see it. There's like a pretty clear tan line there. I, my my usual pasty countenance has been darkened a little bit. Oh, no. a little you went strange. out in the sun. I know. I got, I got sun I got, in Canada. I got lightly toasted. <laughs> I'm surprised you didn't drop dead from vitamin D poisoning. I know, right? God. <laughs> Oh, <laughs> cancer, death, orb in the... No, I, I, I walked out, and then I'm just like that dude from Chronicles of Riddick. I just like, turned into ash. Did you just hear, no, but I... <laughs> but I... No, no, no it's, it's, it's the Canadian version of Vin Diesel. Oh, um, man. I, I can't do that impression without getting kicked off Twitch, so I'm not Yeah, gonna. you gotta be careful like that. The only thing that can get away with that is the horse. I mean, the... <laughs> I mean, the, the the horse doesn't need much because it's got a family. It's the steam. You know, it was it was twenty five years ago today. Sergeant Pepper taught his band to play. No, uh, twenty five years ago, a couple ex Microsoft employees had a dream, a dream of making beloved classic games and then blue balling fans for the sequels for the next twenty five years. <laughs> um, so yeah, happy birthday, Valve. Uh, they have uh, they turned twenty five. Um, they were open in uh, yeah August August twenty fourth, nineteen ninety six. What the fuck date is it? Is the twenty eighth? So four days ago was Valve's birthday. Um, I didn't get them a present because they have enough of my money already. Yeah. I started dating Nori on the 24th of August, but it was 2010. So, yeah. Just weird coincidence there. But, yeah, no. Um, Valve, 25 years old and still can count to three. Ladies and gentlemen, if you're new to the show, that, that counts as a hot take in the land of Mateus. Um, now, now, do you, now yes. here, here, here's the real question. If they hit 30 years, do you think they're just going to dissolve? Because they're just like 29 years and 11 months. So like, nope, it's too close to three. Something I haven't looked up. Um, what about Scott Lynch? The the, uh, the other guy? The CEO. Uh, yeah. Is, is, uh, is Scott still around? Uh, apparently, yeah, according to the Wikipedia. All right. Well, I mean, that's just like the key people. So who knows? I don't know. But yeah. 24 years of Valve, 25 years of Valve, and I've only known it for what? How long have we had? Steam on 2012 was the official release. So it's been, it's been like eight years. Yeah. A couple L- years. L- 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 LGC Nine minus one, ish. pretty much. Eight years. <laughs> yeah. All right. Uh, that, and still to this day, when I launched Steam, there's still a part of my brain beats that looks back at that's weird, man. Seeing Steam launch without it's, like, going it's, through wine. Yeah, it's 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 ordinary now. It's just like start up Steam. That was I, the I, thing I, that made me drop all the Windows installs from my thing. It's like, oh, I don't even need that other computer running Windows anymore. And Gone. somewhere <laughs> right now, there's a, a brand new shiny Mac M1 user wishing me to go play in traffic. <laughs> I understand. <laughs> This is true. <laughs> Pedro, I hear that the best way to run all of your games on Linux is to just run everything through Proton. Linux native games are rubbish. Well, yes and no, which is always the bullshit answer, but uh, it seems to be accurate in most cases. This one is specifically talking about the Steam Linux runtime, aka pressure vessel. If you, if you go to the... Um, right click on a game and then go to compatibility and then select the Steam Linux runtime, even for a native game, you'll be running that through Pressure Vessel. And this article from How To Geek specifically states that 
Running it through a um, pressure vessel may not be the best idea because Proton is better. And Valve is very much uh, invested with Proton and just being able to run all the Windows versions without anyone having to do anything because they control the, uh, the entire ecosystem at that point. So they could just go with that. And that actually makes a lot of sense because with older uh, Linux ports, even pressure vessel at one point, it's probably not going to allow them to run very well, if at all. So one, one, it's, one thing to note is, is that the proton actually does run through pressure vessel. Uh, you can see it when you run a PS, when you're running a game through proton, it does the pressure vessel text <laughs> right there. Uh, but you know, to, to Pedro's point, we're seeing this isn't really a unique position amongst people. Uh, several developers have, and are planning spoilers, uh, to drop Linux support in favor of just using proton and, whether or not that's a good or a bad thing, I, I think long term it's a bad thing, but it's this is the move that Valve is apparently trying to court people to make. I think early on it's going to be at your own damn risk thing because you're going to be wholly reliant on Proton to take care of any bugs, issues and things like that because you're clearly not going to that's, take the time to learn how to do the, you know, get your code base together, get it over to Linux, support it, know the ins and outs of it. You're just like, hey, Proton's going to do the lifting when there's a problem. You're not going to be able to fix it. You're not even going to be able to address it. You're not even going to know where to start your game that that person just bought and it's guaranteed to run. Doesn't run all of a sudden. I mean, that's kind of the case now, though. So, well, yeah, and if you stick to again, buying, if Valve, hang on. If you're buying a game right now that is not running through Proton, there's a good chance if you email the fucking developer and you're like, yo, this is broken. They're like, hey, man. All right. I'll take a look at it. Let me see what I can do. Uh, tell, tell that to the developers of Turnip Boy. There's, there's that, your one yeah. example. <laughs> but then again, stupid as he may be, even Gary Newman seemed to be behind Proton, so there, there you go. <laughs> Moral of the story, kids, is uh, step one is not to immediately switch a Linux native game over to Proton to see it. I mean, do it out of curiosity. If it doesn't run, that's always a very good option. There's, there's yeah. definitely been a couple where, yeah, Hitting the proton button is the best way forward, especially if you want, I don't know, controller support. That's that's kind of a big mm-hmm. one. I mean, if you and, want, you know, FSR, it, it, you just run your game at a lower resolution and it's upscaled and sharpened via FSR. So, yeah, I just squint. <laughs> I, I just I just push my hands on my eyes that. real tightly and then I take them off and then I get all sorts of post processing effects. Yeah. I just run it in 720 and just get real close to the monitor, man. Yeah. Yeah. No, no, no. You, just, you, you run it on, a, on an 8K screen at 720p just to see all the things. Oh, it's pretty sweet. <laughs> so, you ever feel like reading tea leaves, but with wishes as our wishing leaf? My wishing leaf is something completely different. Uh, but, <laughs> yeah. you know, uh, this is from PC Gamer, and they uh, they have a little uh, they have a little bit of a speculative article going on from Evan Lottie. Uh, maybe another Finn? I don't know. <laughs> we were talking a lot about Finnish people. I don't people. know. He looks uh, an awful lot like Gabe or Drew Carey. No, no. That's, I mean, <laughs> no, that's, that's Santa Claus. What are you talking about? Yeah, th- th- that's Santa <laughs> Carey. Uh, but yeah, the, <laughs> there, there was some talk about like the uh, the top games that are being listed. And to rattle off a few, uh, Dying Light, New World, Battlefield 2042, Back for Blood, Party Animals, Hollow Knight Silk Song, Masquerade the Bloodlines, or Vampire the Masquerade Bloodlines 2. All these games, yeah, people seem to be generally excited about that. I mean, Back for Blood, the open beta was like completely clogged. Uh, Mm -hmm. through most of, through most of its run because people are like, Oh my God, more left for dead. Uh, but you know what? Go going through it. It it's, it's a little sad. There's the full screenshot near the bottom of the article. Uh, There are still a couple Linux native games that, um, are being wishlisted, uh, Victoria three world box crown sworn, et cetera. Uh, but yeah, unfortunately, a lot of the times these days, uh, if you want, if any of these games will need to be, uh, enjoyed via proton, if you want to take a crack at them. Hmm. Yeah, and uh, the thing I noticed was, uh, oh, Silk Song is right there. It's like n- number five or number six, as the case may be. Uh, it, oh, yeah, that's still not out because I could swear that that was out already, and I just hadn't played it. But no, no. Have, it's, have, it's you, have you finished out. the first Hollow Knight? I've beat the Hollow Knight, but I didn't have all the things to actually fight the true boss. That's what I haven't done yet. <laughs> what, 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 what about all the DLC? <laughs> well, no. Have you, have you finished that yet? <laughs> to Pedro's point, the first true boss, second true boss, or third true boss, or the hidden true fourth boss? Uh, the one that you need to go into the sky, basically, and 
smack it while jumping. Pedro is that talking about is. radiance. So which radiance? Regular radiance, pure radiance, or ultra radiance? I don't know. <laughs> that I don't know. I just <laughs> well, came back to Linux the, the old Hollow Knight and became the new Hollow Knight. So it's like, oh, that's the ending I get. Okay. That's kind of where I left it. <laughs> Dude, um, Hollow Knight's a fantastic game. They've released so much fantastic content. And most of it, they just gave away, especially when they were like charging 20 bucks for this game, too. I'm like, mm. Wow. Mm-hmm. That is impressive. Um, yeah. As far as wish lists, how do you use your wish list? This is something I'd love you to write into the show about. Let us know how you pick out wish titles for your wish list. It's like, oh, I just see a game and I absently tap wish. If, I, if, uh, if, well, I, I, I have a very... I'm going to say all of us probably we need to have a um, we have a different way of looking at it because what ends up on my wish list is more than likely something I'm going to end up having to play because someone will buy it. Like <laughs> for, for for me, a lot of the times it's just like I want to know when this game gets cheap. So I'm going to stick it on the wish list and then I'll get an email whenever it goes on sale. Mm-hmm. Yes, the, the, I any game that I think, oh, that looks really interesting. I'll probably enjoy playing it. Put it on the wish list. And then I'll get the email. Oh, it's 50% off. Yeah. Bye. You, 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 usually the addendum to that is I look at the stick, the price on the sticker and I'm like, yeah, fuck that. Uh, maybe, 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 maybe on a steam sale. I don't know. I don't know. I mean, I have a silk song in my wish zone and, um, like a couple of other games kind of like that to the point of like, I'm not spending 50 bucks on that, but, Play if someone else wants to yeah. Yeah. um i'll definitely play it once that i'm i'm kind of at that point but i i really don't know what you can divine from wish list because i think it's a personal thing with everybody and it's different well so so what, what what the article is saying is that like yeah you can't really you can't really judge on it based on like small numbers but when you see like thousands of people wish listing a single item that's a pretty good indicator of interest so that that's kind of the central conceit this part. isn't even the show notes but did either of you see the uh, article uh from the developer that's leaving steam over the refund policy no yes oh yeah because you could finish their game at about i can't remember the name of the game minutes. but you could finish yeah you could finish it in like 60 minutes to an hour and a half and so people finished it and despite leaving a good review uh, they refunded it How much that's just for asshole like that, people <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. No, here's the thing here's the thing no i did a little bit of research into it i mean the game nowhere is clearly stated like hey this is a quick little adventure and mm-hmm. it wasn't terribly expensive but it wasn't super cheap either mm. this th- that that speaks to replayability if you're gonna make a game that short there needs to be replayability to it because that's the difference or just a very very it, it's got to hit you at the end of that 60 minutes you gotta go yeah wow yeah, I, not wait what, what? yeah I, I, th- I think i think there's value in having like really short one and done experiences uh, you, you you can get some really compelling stuff in there. Uh, but when you try to apply like broad marketplace rules to it, like where you have these really short experiences that, it's, that could very well be super compelling and then, you know, they don't make any money. And there was a game. Them. There was a game that actually played on that. Uh, the name of the game was Refunct with a K. Uh, it's um, it was very clearly playing on that because if you just played the game the first time, you could finish it in way under two hours. But if you play it again, there's new things. And if you play it again after that, yeah. there's more new things. And the game kind of unfolds like that. And sort of, sort like, of like well near played. Here we go. Notes and shows. Yes. Um, yeah. Steam's two hour <laughs> refund policy leads to any developer quitting game development. This is why we Oof. can't have nice things. Well, I don't know. Okay. <laughs> now I've also seen an argument. Like if you're going to tap out on steam over a refund policy, I mean, if the game can be completed in 90 minutes, which leaves plenty of time for players to exploit, Seems I, that's not exploiting it. If you get done with a game and you're dealing with the type of person who's just going to bounce it back, that refund policy, I, I don't think they're just taking advantage of a tool that is there. Yeah. They don't feel like, oh man, that was, yeah. But, but, but I mean like that, that's the thing. Then you have to, then you as the game developer have to realize, Hey, the, this marketplace doesn't suit me while well. I need to go to itch or somewhere else. This is right. Where, and yes. I don't, I don't understand yeah. making a big stink about it, but I also saw the counter argument to this was, this is why you're seeing 60 and 70 minute long tutorials. Mm-hmm. Just to, just to get people past that. that yeah. Mm. They, they, you know, I, and I was thinking about things like that when I was playing days gone, like just what I would consider the start, you know, after you go through, this is how you do everything. And then you can kind of go out on your own that clocked in, in about an hour and a half. Yeah. 
<laughs> I don't know. I think the refund policy with Steam is a good thing. I've only had to use it, like, as a last resort type thing, and I've only used it twice. And if you abuse it, Steam will cut you off. No. So, what do we think? Because yeah. I also saw an argument probably like two years ago of developers, uh, very niche developers, like one or two, saying they were upset that people were not buying their game because people were streaming it. That 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 whole argument is poo poo, right? Like, if your game um, can be experienced fully by watching someone else, play watching it, someone else, yeah. yeah. <laughs> then, then, then I, I, I feel you've made a movie. I, I feel that argument kind of falls in with like the piracy argument, right? Where the people who are going to watch this on Twitch or the people who are going to pirate it are not necessarily there. There may be some overlap for sure, but they're not necessarily the same people who will actually go out and buy your game. Mm. So mm-hmm. there, there's, there's, there's a bit of like selection bias there. Uh, uh, you probably, probably needs more research. Someone could write a paper on it. I don't fucking know. Fair enough. Well, I, Here's the problem yeah. that everyone's had at some point. Cause you do have two factor enabled on your steam account, right? You better. Yes. You should hundred <laughs> percent. There's no excuse not to. And I'm sure somebody's going to go the well, actually, and I'm going to tell you, no, get out of here. You can do it. Um, you go to log in, especially when you go to buy a game and you're using the web browser cause you don't want to open steam or whatever the reason. And it says, Hey, give me that two FA baby. Like, ah, there's got to be, we're going to call it Venn's law because the mobile device, the single one you're allowed to have with Steam Authenticator on it, all is in the opposite time zone of wherever you're at. It is the furthest <laughs> thing away from you. It is not near you. <laughs> that, 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 that is, <laughs> that is the true, true. This might be able to help you out just a little bit. This is Steam Guard CLI, a Linux utility for generating two-factor authentication codes for Steam and managing Steam trade confirmations. And yeah command line utility you say i do say because that's what it says on the github page links in the show notes but this is all kinds of handy man now you do need to import your ms files with the steam desktop authenticator which is available for linux as well maybe you didn't know about that and uh what i would like to see is something tied into this with like maybe a chrome plugin or firefox plugin that could just yoink this where it could just like pop up like hey boom boom done I don't, I don't know, man, because like Steam 2FA, it's good that it's there, but it's kind of in the Stone Age when it comes to like the features that it implements. I really wish they would offer some like generic time based OTP thing mm-hmm. or like a like some sort of push notification, like duo, just something better than what's there because it's not great. Well, you know, that, that, that's just like your two options for two factor is mobile authenticator and email. Yeah. And yeah. arguably. The- or so, 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 sometimes you get a text. Okay. Arguably, two-factor with the app is more secure than email, and that's mm-hmm. why I use the app. But email is hella more convenient because it just pops up on whatever device you're on. You're like, oh, psh, 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 done. Mm. I don't know. Do you have any thoughts on this, Pedro? None? Okay. I, I wish that uh, people could integrate uh, something into Authy because Authy would... It doesn't even have to be Authy. It just an application that I can have all my two FA things in, and then I can sign into it from all the different devices and just access it. That's, I want that. And steam does not allow for uh, Google authenticator. So you can't use Authy and you can't use any of the other ones. It has to be the steam app and the steam app is shit. You know what? Google Authenticator finally added the ability to export everything out of it like 20 seconds after I spent an entire mothering afternoon <laughs> manually getting everything copied over. Excellent. Good on Excellent. you, Google. <laughs> the, one, the one thing that pisses me off about Authy, because I was going to recommend it as part of my consult gig, there's no enterprise management options. Hmm. It's all individual yeah. user shit. And that is that is unfortunate. Yes. Oh, I could see that uh, being the issue. So, mm, yeah. Pedro, give me some of that super wood. Yes, the um, d- the developer uh, Vihuda or Victor, I don't remember what the middle name <laughs> was, and uh, the last name is the Cruz. Uh, thank you very very much. Uh, so, just some keys. Uh, so that's that's very nice. And I actually got a chance to play it earlier today when I first went to start it. What are we talking wouldn't. about? We're talking about super wooden GP. You're welcome. Whoa, ten. Yes, the <laughs> uh, when I first went to start it, it it was just a zero byte download, so I would 
to the developers like, uh, I get that it's not the release date yet, so maybe it's intentional. Uh, I, I look forward to playing it on the first. And it's like, no, 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 I just forgot to tie the Linux depot to the curator uh, branch. So, yeah, no, try again. I thought it, maybe he read go. the article earlier and he was like, just use the Proton <laughs> Scrum. <laughs> it's, that's also possible. You never know. Yeah, no, I did ponder that, but I figured, you know what? Since he already sent his keys, let's just send him another email, see uh, what it says. And it it works. Uh, so it is, uh, the presentation looks a lot like uh, Art of Rally, but with textures. But it's not. Uh, the Art of Rally very much had the emphasis on having like a big-ish map that you could actually free roam uh, your way into. This one, no, it's 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 much more standard. Oh, so like you pick a track. This isn't you... out yet, by the way. So, yes, yeah. okay. We don't have three any days, information days. on pricing. The developer did not send us uh, any information on pricing. He just sent us the keys on Curator Connect, which you know very much appreciated. <laughs> and I've tried it on uh, KDE Neon twenty oh four, so that that worked out of the box. Yeah. So, yeah, it is, if you like these kinds of games, it, it still annoys me because, oh, it's another racing game with the isometric view. Can, can, can we not? I don't want you to be so down on it, because I think maybe, Jordan, <laughs> me and you can uh, get together and we can play some multiplayer, right? Ah, oh, hell no, man. Oh, man. It's, what? <laughs> yeah, yeah they, got, they got that local multiplayer, so unless you like that what? Steam remote play with your rally driving. Uh, oh. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. You, With a one second you, delay, you, go ahead and make that you, turn. <laughs> you you may you may enjoy it, but you're going to be playing it in forever alone mode. Let's let's be real. Oh, boo. <laughs> well, um, I maybe we'll, we'll, yeah, I'm more excited about this than I am what is up next. <laughs> oh yes, yeah. which uh, which also does not have online multiplayer. Axis Football 2021. <laughs> uh, that is Axis Hand Egg to our non-North American audience. Uh, so yeah, another addition into the uh, highly prestigious <laughs> Linux sports game canon. Uh, going through the reviews, people seem to really like the franchise season mode in this. Um, the one chief complaint I had was that if you're like looking for super in-depth like football play and strategy, it's not quite there. It's just there for uh, their support for like basic plays and whatnot. But if you actually know your way around like a football game and you know some strategy, then you can apparently just easily. I, I think we're AI. probably going to be dealing with like on the Mega Drive, like Madden 92 level of maybe um but yeah people people really seem to respond to the uh to the career mode apparently it's one of the better ones on the market for football games so i mean yeah more more sports games on linux right like it's woefully underrepresented as a genre i don't like them personally but i know people who do and i'm sure people appreciate having a native version to play 30 bucks yes pedro are you excited <laughs> you can finally put those tights on and it's music. Not really. The the closest thing to sports games that I like are racing games. So, yeah, no, especially uh, American football. That mm, no, my my, no. my favorite sports game is postal water sports. <laughs> I don't know. Um, so, to Jordan's point, not much in the way. Uh, we always want to point out a sports game when we see it. Probably not the biggest people, uh, biggest fans of sports games in general. But there's a. That is like the least served genre yep. on Linux, period. And so we mm -hmm. always want to give a mention. And there was some hubbub with the Axis series. We covered it on the show last, man, probably six years ago. Uh, they, <laughs> there were, there, they'd were sent us some copies. And there was one where uh, I tried to launch it. And on Linux, you kick the ball and it just crashed. <laughs> <laughs> and yes. at that point, I, I, I'm going off foggy memories from a long time ago. But I do remember talking about that bug and the developer going, yeah, but we got the new version of Access Football coming out. So let's let's just buy that one instead. <laughs> well, now you can buy the new, 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 new version. 2021. Sorry, new, 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 new version. More there we go. new. Yes. Hunter Girls. <laughs> Hunter Girls, Hunter Girls doesn't really fit with Spider Man. Yeah, uh, so this is Hunter Girls. Um, it is a game. It's a platform action type game where you play as three quote unquote beautiful girls uh, trying to save a prince, uh, and you can swap between them uh, to apparently deal with enemies. Uh, and part part of this is uh, certain enemies need to be dealt with with specific orders um, of your units. So that's a lot of where the challenge comes in. 
Uh, it's it's priced at five bucks, so it's pretty it's pretty cheap. I get a bit of a Shing vibe from having to like to, from the whole like juggling your um, juggling your players to like manage your health. Really? Because uh, this reminds me a whole lot of a game that we have a bit of experience with. And that is it's called it's, Trine. It's not Trine, no. <laughs> it's one hundred percent Trine. This is Pixel Trine. <laughs> yeah, no, there's, no, there's no puzzle solving. The first solving. thing that it, yeah, the first thing that jumped the uh, to me was uh, oh, so it's um, Lost Vikings, but with less beard. But no, no, no. Apparently, it's just a action uh, pick your character to deal with a specific enemy. There was one thing watching that trailer. Uh, you see, like, the mage has a mana pool of 50, and whenever she casts a spell, it drains it by one. The um, warrior at the front seems to have a health pool. She's the one with the sword and shield, so she's the tank. She's the one to, that takes the enemy attacks, and she has a health of 100 there. The archer in the middle, never do you see her arrows, uh, arrows? No. arrows. arrows uh, go up to... Any kind of two digit number, it's always three four zero three four zero. Like, why is the uh bow woman uh getting the short end of the stick, so to speak? Maybe whoever's recording the footage is like, Yeah, the bow lady is like the most OP, and I've just been using her to cruise <laughs> the entire level, and I'm out of ammo because of it. It's like it's all the different clips and all the different places during the trailer. It's like w- w- she has no arrows. Ever. Maybe, maybe you recover arrows at a faster rate than you do mana. I don't know. Maybe you can check it out for five ninety nine or four. So we got some Canadian. good news, everyone. Uh, the new hotness, all the kids are playing it. Uh, and it's also available on Linux. Is what I keep wanting to call Slipgate, but this is incorrect because it's Splitgate. It is. <laughs> Basically, what what is the best? It's first person shooter. It's shooting with portals. H- Halo meets portals. Kind of. That's, that's, that's what people are saying. This is season oh, Halo. zero uh, launch, and it is out. <laughs> uh, new maps, modes, battle pass, and more. Day one Linux, so they've rock and rolled with that. Mm-hmm. It is using Vulcan, which you know, if you're familiar with Unreal Engine four, that's usually what it's going to poop out. The when I first launched it, I wanted to say Mango Hut was misreporting it. It was showing OpenGL. But uh, when I threw the Vulcan flag in, if you're curious about UE4, you know, you do the uh, command dash Vulcan and that'll just force it if it has a Vulcan render available. And it then processed shaders. So who knows? And I'm guessing this game was originally called Portal Wars because um, that's the name of the window under Linux when you get it. Running. <laughs> someone someone didn't change <laughs> yeah, somebody, somebody got a little oopsie doodle on that. I went through the <laughs> tutorial with this. Pretty fucking Did interesting. Did you just hit someone with a disco yes, ball? Yes, yes. CTF. Yeah, disco you, ball. it has a ball mode like um, Unreal Tournament 2. Okay. Yeah. 2004. So, so it's, it's it's a good game for getting <laughs> balls in your face. It, it got interesting in the tutorial when like, okay, put the portal. It's like, oh, kill your enemy over there by putting a portal over his head. And like, and then oh, shooting right. them from the top. Um, yeah. yeah. <laughs> like, okay. I, I might, I might be able to get down with that. Uh, look forward to it maybe we're not going to play it tonight because i do not have the hard drive space left to install it right now but maybe next week when i'm done with the game and i got some stuff cleared off uh we'll, we'll give it a play in the after show see how it feels out yeah i installed it yeah. just Sounds out of good. curiosity I, 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 I did i did too mm-hmm. i was i was i thought we were going to play it a couple weeks ago but we never got around to it so yeah. it's yeah, something no, that much like you future. i played the tutorial that that was <laughs> I think it I guess I gotta go do that. I, yeah, I played it long enough to realize that we could do a custom server. So good on you, lot. Ah, dedicated server. Nice. I I can create one. Or, I don't know if it's dedicated okay. or not. Yeah. Okay. We don't have to play with randos. But Pedro's favorite two D Dark Souls ish game that he likes it's this week. Very much up there. Yes. Uh, Blasphemous. There's a new free DLC, The Wounds of Eventide. Uh, and uh, there's a bit of an announcement about a sequel. Yeah, the DLC itself is the last bit of story content exploring the last few elements and characters in the game that didn't really get addressed up, um, uh, up until now. One of which, uh, the the one that seems to be featured the most is uh, Chrysantha of the uh, Wrapped Agony. I think that's the name of the order. Uh, she's the one with the Wrapped Sword there in the trailer. And the... Um, yeah, there, there's a couple oh, of uh, interesting of bits of story. Where they don't include 
any gameplay. No, no gameplay. Got it. <laughs> but yeah, the um, the end of the trailer actually shows a little Roman numeral two, uh, along with the the narrator uh, speaking some Latin and uh, translating the uh, the Latin basically is. Um, Listen, uh, twisted father, to our prayer. A turn and face uh, the nameless guilt or the nameless guilty, something like that, uh, because the miracle is returned. Mm. So, yes, there will be a blasphemous two oh. somewhere is in Jesus, 2023. Is Jesus <laughs> the final boss? Yes. Jesus. Possibly. I mean, the, with the amount of it's, Christian guilt in this game, the yes. <laughs> I, I, I honestly had to go with Catholic on this one, Brad. A little bit. A little bit. Very, very, very yeah. heavily Catholic. <laughs> um, so, Turnip Boy Commits Tax Evasion is a game that all three of us liked, and for different reasons, I do believe. I mean, it had a nice sense of humor about it. Uh, technically, uh, it was very competent under Linux. We didn't yeah. have any issues there. We bit on the short side. I think we all agreed on that. And, uh, well, it's also no longer available for Linux. Yeah. True story. Uh, this is a forum post by the developer. You might know him. You might love him. The ever regal wizard poop. Uh, Linux support in the future. Attention gamers and tax evaders. We will be dropping support for Linux beyond June 16th release of the game. If you have Linux version installed. It will not be updated with future content and fixes. Unfortunately, you will need to download the windows or Mac version. For future updates, we apologize for any inconvenience this may cause, but it's been a struggle to reliably build and test Linux versions. So, it will not be updated in the future. Update! The team is looking for more solutions and help from the community <laughs> with testing. We will be releasing a new build on a beta branch of this Sunset Station update soon, because you know what, motherfuckers? Everybody walked into there and like, hey, how are you going to yeah. be handling the refunds? <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Uh, I, I, you can absolutely power a light bulb with the amount of backpedaling they're doing in that statement. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. they forgot about the refunds. That's exactly what I wrote because uh, before that update showed up, I was like, "Yo, you know what? I suggest that they start setting up the refund. However, they're going to handle it before Valve steps in because Valve's going to step in at some fucking point if you just drop Linux support for your title. Um, you know, ask Rust, Rocket Cars." That third, they've already set that precedence and uh, human fall flat and Superland, right, Pedro? Yep, those were the two others that I could think of. <laughs> and also, on top of everything else, strange timing, Brad. Considering yeah. Uh, yeah, we're like three months. Oh, out. is this Steam Deck's coming out? Oh, let, I know. Let's drop the Linux version. Well, here's the, here's the thing. I thinking. appreciate your hot take on it, though, Jordan. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I, I I was under the impression that the game was you, you know done. Uh, apparently not. Yeah, well, you know, clicking export is very hard. Uh, uh, um, doesn't work mm -hmm. like that. Yeah, um, <laughs> the, 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 the whole it's been a struggle to reliably build and test the Linux version kind of comes across as our code is shit and our Linux build is busted and it's cheaper to just ignore it and move on. But as Ben mentioned with the Steam refund policy, that may not actually be the case. Yeah. But you know, but like and again, if you if you go through the thread, there's a lot of people going, "Well, it works fine on Proton. They don't need to do any sort of Linux support because Valve will support it with Proton." And again, it's true. But how long will that remain true? Um, how 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 long until like pl finding the magic Proton version is going to become like the the name of the game? Right? Things are pretty good these days when you just select the latest are Proton Experimental, but I know for certain that there are several games where you're going to have to pin that version of Proton specifically because they introduced a new bug. Yeah, that's, uh, I mean, you, you guys and gals over there, you did a fantastic job with the Linux release. Thanks for sending us copies for it, but mm -hmm. live and let learn. Refunds are a thing that, you know, if you drop a platform support on, uh, it could have been for a different reason. I'm going to assume it wasn't, but for all we know, just a radical, we had the ghost of Linux pass showed up, kicked in the door like the Kool-Aid man. And like, oh, <laughs> yeah, no, I really do hope they uh, keep uh, putting out the Linux versions because I liked, I very much liked Turnip Boy Commits Tax Evasion. I did. I finished it all the way through it. And that wasn't a very long game. Mm -hmm. So yeah, those refunds, they got to sting a little bit. And if you do drop the Linux version, I'm not touching it again. I do want to play the uh, the new station uh, DLC content update thingy. 
but I won't. Oh, Pedro, you're just being a tip. You're what's wrong with Linux gaming. Blindly, like in the old days, just give them money and shut up. <laughs> yes, uh, the, I'm paying the same amount of money. Well, we didn't pay anything because they sent us keys. <laughs> but for other games that we are paying the same exact amount of money that everyone else is and we get the shit version. Yeah, no. <laughs> Listen, okay. Now you do have to think though, and also all cattiness and being snarky aside, there is, I do believe, a common misconception among developers that people are just dual booting into their fuck around partition and playing mm-hmm. Linux occasionally and like, hey, just boot back into Windows, bro. Boot back that's into what Windows. They do. So that that's their uh, Linux experience, so <laughs> that's being generous. No, it's yeah. called spinning a virtual box. <laughs> a vagr- a, they then, ran a vagrant. Uh, whining on Twitter. Oh no, I already mentioned Gary Newman. Never mind. <sighs> yeah, we, we we don't we don't want to give Gary any more attention than he's due. Give me attention, guys. Come on. Ah, <laughs> uh, that's well, gonna do that. <laughs> yep. The news will be coming up, but uh, Jordan is now going to tell you exactly why you should shut up and give us money. Yeah, anyways, head on over to <laughs> patreon.com slash uh, Linux Gamecast if you want to support this nonsense. Uh, there's a number of backer levels for you, gets you a bunch of cool stuff. Minimum gets you at least access to the uh, Discord channel. Uh, you get access to the uh, live VODs uh, and the pre-pre-super shows and podcast in audio form. If you're an executive producer, you get the video version. A little bit more money, and you can get access to the show notes. You can suggest stories. You can offer commentary, um, issue corrections. Just make fun of us in our show notes. Uh, you can, if you just want to watch the show congeal over the course of the week, uh, you, you you too can see how there's nothing in the news segment on Friday at 4 p.m. And then Saturday <laughs> at 1 p.m., there's everything in the news segment. Because that's just how things roll here. Uh procrastination gets shit done absolutely yes. procrastinators work better we got a store store.linuxgamecast.com <laughs> you can buy all your best quality lgc apparel and confuse the people around you as to why you have a long-haired cv nick skull with the mustache on your chest <laughs> or a use me penguin or a helix <laughs> sticker um you, you know what the, the the possibilities are limitless and you can combine the stickers and the shirts and just make all sorts of put nonsense the stickers on the shirts yeah and then and, yeah. then, and then put yes. like the fan yeah yeah uh, ab- absolutely you, you can just go nuts if you got some pictures of that send us some hate mail Show us your custom bespoke Linux Gamecast merch monstrosity. We would love to see it. We got Wish Zones. Um, if you want to help us out, you can go to linuxgamecast.com. Move your mouse over the support tab. Go down to wish lists. I have one. Ven has one. Pedro has one. Jill has one. The stoop. Uh, Ven's is the studio one. If you buy him stuff off of that, it goes to improve the technology stack that is running all this nonsense. Plus, you get your name that on the fuck wall 3.0. Um, there we go. No. <laughs> okay. That way? No. Uh, there we go. It's like it's like the claw machine. <laughs> I think I've dislocated my things. <laughs> yeah, ab- excellent. Um, but yeah, all, uh, no, another fringe my benefit of memory. <laughs> yeah, another fringe benefit of buying stuff <laughs> off the wish list for us is that you can send us notes, and within reason, we will read them. So yes. that's pretty cool. Do we get? I don't think we have yes. anyone to thank this week. We get everybody out um, of the way recently. Also, I did update the uh, Bitcoin. If you want to send us some magic internet monies, that's a thing. But Hey, if you want to know what it feels like to spend Bitcoin, we'll take care of that for you. No more worries about holding it. Like, oh, what do I do with it? I just spend that shit straight on. But I do want to thank each and every single one of you for helping us make this show possible. This is brought to you ad-free, loud, live, independent, and it is with your help. We have a very insane business model where we do the show, and if you like it, kick us some coin. It's kind of crazy to do it this way, but it's been working with us so far, working for us, I should say. You've all been part of that. Work, work, work with us and give work us money. with us. Yes. yes. <laughs> Make it rain <laughs> dollars. So, so. Uh, <laughs> this next story is sourced from our favorite Linux hardware website. Yes. Video cards. No, no, well, there, they there, do. There, there's a primary. There is a primary source there, but we're not going to mention <laughs> what it is. It, it, yes. The, 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 there's always the uh, Pharonix link because that's what people know about Linux news, but hey, uh, the <laughs> the uh, article from Video Cards uh, actually references the original um, DRM AMD GPU patch set that was uh, submitted by Alex Ducher, and uh, it is uh, it's just Deutscher? a bunch more Deutscher Ducher. 
something like that. You, you, but you yeah, said it is. God damn, me. we'll get to the point in a minute. I apologize. <laughs> but yeah, it Never. is. Uh, he works for AMD and he's trying to um, improve the AMG, AMD GPU shim support for all the different uh, GPUs, obviously. And there are, um, let's see, 17 new ones and 15 um, already existing uh, PCI IDs. So that's basically what we have here is just the extra PCI IDs to AMD GPU and the even the new ones they all seem to be just revisions of the 6000 cards they're all Navi 20 somethings so no news on the uh, the 7000 series for uh, Linux support just whatever yet. Pedro and, uh, we all know what this is this is a revision we're going to be dice rings it probably and AMD is looking at uh, other um <laughs> basically other fabs that aren't TSMC because they're kind of swamped right now. <laughs> I don't know. I, ultimately, at the end of the day, we're, we're currently sitting in the video card market in 2021. I get, I look at it like this, man. Tell me, or just leaking or announcing new cards. I, I don't care what it is. I don't care if you're just doing Skittle colors to these motherfuckers. It, it's the equivalent <laughs> of telling a starving populace that you got a new recipe because we can't get it. Doesn't matter. Um, I, for one, am not excited. Very difficult. It is, yeah, it's just AMD GPUs, and apparently the 6600 that they released, it didn't work so well on Linux out of the box. It's a new AMD card, Pedro, I mean... uh, But that's the thing, when they first released the 6000 series, like the 6700 and the 6900, those worked out of the box. Those actually worked out of the box, they had that down, so what happened? So you you have an, an example of one... That happened once. Yes. <laughs> they, they did a good, and so I thought, oh, maybe they learn now. So I guess not. The moral <laughs> of the story is people don't learn, apparently. But uh, I, I mean, ho- I mean, ho- hopefully this will uh, this, this, this is all being added to uh, the Mesa stack. So hopefully we'll see a release soon. And, you know, yes. once once you're able to soon. get your hands on one of these cards, it will hopefully work mm-hmm. on Linux. Because right now. I, you, you can afford to wait for drivers is all I'm saying. You can wait for drivers because you're going to have the card in your hand. And I think it yeah. is, it's easier for me to apply my wishful thinking more to Q1 of 2022 with whatever Intel comes out with versus the chances of me getting my mitts on a 3060 before then. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> we, 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 we shall see. We'll keep keep an ear out for uh, pop up crypto mining operations near you. Oh, man. Hi, hydro natural gas. Uh, agile input. With yeah. Godot. yeah, this is this is kind of neat. So Godot has a uh, new uh, new post from uh, another Pedro, as Pedro pointed out in the uh, yes. in the show notes. Pedro Pedro's J. Estevanez. Together. They're so rare. Yeah, uh, but uh, he's been doing some uh, he's been doing some work on the input sta- stack on Android, and now uh, now they have an input buffering subsystem for Android, uh, and only Android, at least for now. Uh, it comes in two parts though. There's the there's the actual input buffer component, and then there's the OS level shim, because the second part uh, is done or it's all done for Android. That means that you could theoretically implement this for other operating systems if you have the opportunity. And because Godot is open source, odds are it's coming sooner rather than later. So hopefully we can get some, uh, we can get some better input handling under Godot. Maybe that will be good for some fighting games. Very interesting. Now, my immediate thought was that uh, we, what do we have? One, two Godot games that we've had available to us that we've played. And I didn't like note it. I didn't realize that input handling was an issue. Maybe it is just more of an issue on Android. Quite yeah, possibly. because of the lack of uh, proper uh, multi-threading and multi-processing happening. Ah. Uh, yes. <laughs> okay. Fine. It was still an announcement. I wanted to give it a mention. Not as much as I did about Grover Cube. And I know yeah, it's Grover Cube, but I'm calling it Grover Cube. Uh, shut up, Cookie Monster. Rawr. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Grover Cube. Um, so you might you might not be... Mal- you may be like me and not know what the fuck a Grover Cube is. Um, it's an OpenGL Vulkan overlay manager. It basically allows you to manage your post-processing, FSR, and other such things so that you can optimize your setting. The new release has a neat little feature because now there is a live rendered cube that you can, uh, in real time, uh, apply these uh, pro- uh, filters and processors to to uh, mess around with your settings, which is always nice to have. Uh, it uses yep. VK basalt on the back end. Uh, there, it has an. It is basically a wrapper for a bunch of different disparate um, command line and developer tools. But sometimes this is the shit you need to actually like put a solution into practice. So, 
And yeah, Goverlay is actually, if you want to manage, um, Goverlay, Goverlay, yes. (laughs) Uh, it's, uh, if you want to manage stuff like Mango HUD and VK Basalt, it is very good because it just gives you a bunch of tick boxes and a bunch of boxes that you could just tap the values you want into. It is very, very nice. And this makes it even nicer because you get that 3D rendered cube, you have Mango HUD on one side to tell you the FURPS, and then you can see exactly with the different resolutions what VK Basalt's going to do. And VK Basalt, it just does uh, the, it applies the contrast adaptive sharpening like FSR does nowadays. So yeah, you can actually see what that's doing in real time. That, that, that. That life preview yeah. is really nice. The uh, <laughs> the uh, the other thing this one can do, and hopefully this will be uh, this, the live preview will be added to it as well, is you can uh, import uh, replays uh, using VK Base Salt. So if you're using, yes. so if you if you want to like uh, figure out how to improve graphics for specific games and you ha- or under specific circumstances and you have a OpenGL or, or Vulkan replay of it, you can mess around with that, which is probably a good way of hand- narrowing down what these specific issues are. Neat. All right, yes. Wine sixteen. Not much to it. Yeah, 616. It's now canon in Marvel Comics. That's a that's a cut for people. Uh, there's a brand new uh, human interface device uh, based joystick backend, which Pedro, you're saying that should help with uh, your old PS3 controllers? Yeah, it's all the direct input joysticks because uh, if you uh, click on the what's new link in there, it actually shows it's, oh, it's all direct input stuff that they're basically making it so you don't have to put that D input 8 DLL override in order to get your joystick or, 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 or use like X-Pad or something. Or- yeah, or the X360C, any of them. So yeah, no, yeah. that's nice. That's very, very nice. Or, you know, <laughs> yeah. buy a controller made in the last decade. I mean, or some yeah, people don't have the money to do that. Want, yeah, <laughs> don't want to necessarily give Microsoft the dominant platform. What are you talking about? Uh, You're playing the, with wine. Uh, X input. Wine. <laughs> wine. <laughs> yes, wine. <laughs> wine. Uh, wine. So, yeah, there's uh, there's some other stuff here. Uh, there's a remake, a uh, rework of the GDI syscall framework in proc in uh, process, which is necessary for a bunch of older apps and things don't that don't specifically require 2D or 3D acceleration. You know, you know, Visual Basic apps for tracking killer IPs and whatnot. Also, if you look at the uh, bug list, it apparently makes Tetris work real good now. And finally, finally, people under Linux, your long national nightmare is over. You can finally install Internet Explorer four yes. to completion. <laughs> yeah. I kind of jumped out of nowhere. I was reading through the things like you can now install Internet Explorer 4. Fuck yeah, buddy. (laughs) None none of this Firefox, Chrome, Vivaldi shit. I'm an OG, Active X. Joke about this, but somebody, somebody out there finally, finally did a victory lap and they're like, about time. This was crazy. Oh, no, reported the bug. Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) No, no, this this is 100% because there is some legacy financial Uh or medical application that only fucking works on IE4. And this is the only way you can use it. Now. And they're trying to get corporate off Windows XP. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Good luck. OBS Studios out. It's what we use to bring you this show live. And uh, 27.1 RC1 is available for testing. And man, they got a bunch of stuff that could potentially make your life a little bit better. Up to and including hot YouTube integration. That's right. YouTube Sexy. can tie your YouTube account and log into it directly from OBS on Linux, but only with the official builds. So you got to use their PPA. Do keep that in mind. That's also available for Twitch. They re-enabled drag and drop for scenes and sources. They had to disable that on Linux because it would spike crash OBS. So that's back. I'm, <laughs> I'm very glad to see that. Now I'm currently running a 27.1 RC1, basically top ahead. I compiled it before the show today. Not having any issues with it, and OBS is a very, very interesting piece of kit, and uh, we're all very grateful that it does exist. Um, <laughs> anything, guys? Have you ever used OBS? I mean, either of you? Maybe. <laughs> no, no I, I, I only use XSplit on Linux. No, um, the, the, the one thing, the one little brain fart I had while reading through these notes was there's a added an eight scene, eighteen scene multi view option, and then underneath that is add a mask only option. And I read that originally as added an 18 only option. I'm like, ah, so you're catering to the porno <laughs> live streamers now. <laughs> okay. Only fans streaming. Here we go. <laughs> best no, that, that's PG only. That's why they, that's where they're trying to kill the porn. That's I, why they were doing it. I joke about this, but the way to keep apprised unintentionally, but you have the, huh, is uh, follow on um, the OBS discord and, um, uh, 
commits because you'll see the names of new streaming services and I always play porn or not with the, uh, <laughs> like the service ad. And I'm like, hmm, maybe, maybe not. And sometimes you're pleasantly surprised. You're like, oh no, huh. All right. Oh, there's the porn. Never mind. Uh, yeah, sometimes you're pleasantly surprised and you find titties. Yeah. <laughs> At the end of the day, something that you can use with OBS is video capture card. That uh, That's always a popular thing. If you don't On have Red Ripper even unreasonable standards, common question again, like, Hey man, what do I use for, uh, you know, 1080p 60 capture? I'm like, Oh, that's great for under $30. I'm like nothing. Go away. Um, it doesn't work like that. <laughs> There's always that in qualifier that'll jack it up. And it's like, and it also needs to capture CGA. <laughs> Those things exist, but they make like four of them a year and they're like half a grand. Speaking of things that are half a grand, the Decklink Quad 4K60 HDMI recorder plus a handy dandy fix if you plan on using this with Epic or Threadripper. Now, this was a little bit of an adventure because unlike most videos, this one was an entire year in the making because Blackmagic took genuinely 360 days to the day to reply to my <laughs> support request. That wasn't from support. I got a hold of the developer section and just out of luck, they got back to me in under a year, which, hey, as I said in the video, despite what you hear on the Internet, tech support at Blackmagic is improving now. Like most people, I constantly find myself needing to capture not one, not two, not three, but four 2160p, aka 4K for people who are bad at maths, video streams at the same time. And this is going to do it for you. And, um, you know, you got to think about this. I've, I've brought this up in the video. Blackmagic has this like segment on lockdown because if you were going to be using professional equipment, like from Magewell, AJ Acona, they don't have a quad, but they get one that'll do one and some other 1080p streams, that's like 900 bucks. Magewell, if you need four consumer 4K or actual 4K 60 DCI, that's going to run you a little bit more than this one. This one is, let's go to the bottom of the review bin. Look at that. We got a little review section. 545 bucks for this, which is relatively inexpensive. But the Magewell, they don't have a single card that would do it. It would take two cards, and those two cards together are going to run you a little over $3,500 for those two cards. Now, yeah. <laughs> let me tell you what works. It does the 1080p. All this is in the video. Go watch it. Uh, for 1080p capture, that's what we're using um, in this shot. Plus, we have an extra one for the after shows. It works very well. No problems there. And it can do the same thing at 2160p, or you can mix and match, which is also very, very neat. Low noise. Unlike the Mage Wall card that I had to do a fan mod to, it won't chase you out of the room. You can't hear it on the other side of the house with a puzzle of fan. It's, uh, and again, relatively inexpensive. However, you can't use these as a webcam. Blackmagic doesn't roll like that. You, know, you can get away with that because the Magewell products work for the um, B4L2. DSLR, compatib DSLR compatibility can be a little spotty with these. And by that, I mean every time they update the firmware, usually something will start working and something will stop working. It puts a lot of heat out into your case even for a mm. black magic product. If you go, go on eBay and look at used black magic cards, look on the back, every single one of them, the serial number sticker will be curled up every single one of them. <laughs> this is, this is just the thing. <laughs> this thing does that times four. It dumps a lot of heat into your case. Keep that in mind. And um, yeah, as long as you know what you're dealing with black magic support. So it does now work with a uh, thread ripper. We've been using it. I've been using it for a month. You know, if I have a product, Thank you to our patrons. The reason we can do shit like this, we're not beholden to, you know, I'm not worried about saying something bad about black magic, Bought this with cash and it took a year to get back to it. But let's say how it really works. I'm going to spend a month with it. And that's what I did before I even brought this back up. You know, I got it back in system. We've been using it for the show. So I've done two, four, you know, 15, 16 shows with this thing. It hasn't blinked perfectly stable. No problems with it whatsoever. And the fix, if you're wondering, it's just adding the AMD, uh, what is it, IOMMU? Yeah, turn, turning phone. that off. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yep. which turn it off. <laughs> I wanted to write back from that one email. I didn't vent. I didn't vent on them, but I'm like, so what about the potential security risk that involved? Because it does, technically, if you want to look it up, uh, that can introduce something. But it's a great card if you have a use for it. Uh, do keep in mind, as I was replying back to someone on YouTube today, 
the latest and greatest unified driver for Black Magic hardware, it doesn't matter which card you have, only supports kernel 510 and lower. So if it doesn't build, yeah, if you're running the latest Ubuntu, latest pop, arch, it's going to tell you to get wrecked. You're going to have to roll back the kernel Ouch. to what it supports, to 510. That's reality of it, which is the latest long-term kernel. So I understand why that's a decent target, but that's also why the video opens with a segment I like to call RTFM which is exactly what we do together in the video. We read the fucking manual. Yep. Yeah, that's it. Pedro, you have black magic hardware. I do. I have one of the non 4k intensity pro. Yes. Intensity pro. Uh, and um, it, it, the, the insulting the drivers was interesting. It's like, Oh, you need this, but it didn't say anything in the page, but you need that. Okay. Right. <laughs> what do you mean this? Oh, don't that? don't you love incomplete dependency <laughs> chains? And then it's like find the package. What provides this yeah, no, file? The, they in the uh, the page that you download the drivers. It has like the a very short list of dependencies. Like okay, I have those installed. Mm-hmm. Uh, that one wasn't listed. So what's going on? <laughs> here's a real question. You you were using app to install it, right? Uh, do you point the thing at the devs at the folder. Yes. <laughs> yeah, that'll do the dependency resolution with the depth. Yes. Yeah. But yeah, it pulled a bunch of them. It was like, that That wasn't listed. What? <laughs> if you install build essentials in your kernel headers, it'll pull one in OpenGL. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Which d- those two were mentioned. The other one was not. I, d- I don't remember exactly what it was, but Ven probably does. <laughs> I'm unfamiliar with that one. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> But that's reasonable for getting something up and running. When you're dealing with stuff that's like semi-pro or pro, you will run into the same situation that I've run into in the studio a lot of times. You run what's supported. You don't run what you want. That's that's life. So if you're looking for something, you know, just to do simple, basic 1080p capture, somebody asked me that. Get one of the uh, Elgato, uh, what are they called? Cam links? I believe mm-hmm. they're called cam links. They're, they're like $80, $90, and... That'll get you sorted and you'll be done because, or else you're playing RNG lottery with things that may or may not even be USB three. <laughs> it, it might, it might yes. just have a blue tab. <laughs> right. and, uh, it's just a blue connector. <laughs> it's just a thumb drive. Oh, man. So yeah, that's my story. Go check it out over at Linux uh, Linux pixel shaders. It's a little too real. Yeah. Running an entire uh, Linux off of a shader in VR chat. Yeah, no, a uh, crazy person uh, by the name of Pi uh, decided, you know what? Let's get uh, a shader because uh, VR chat introduced Udon, which is a programming language that allows people to write their own code and bring it into the game. And he noticed that a lot of people were uh, doing really fancy things with the shaders. And there's so- a kitty cat person. Yep. It's VR chat. It's a, a game where people spend most of the time doing sexy roleplay. So, yeah. 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 The <laughs> sexy kitty cat roleplay. What? Can you yeah, just so, have like the uh, kitty cat eyes and be a witcher? You. I mean, I'm sure, I'm sure that's there too. Okay. <laughs> but yeah, no, he, uh, he noticed that someone had actually emulated an entire chip eight and, um, like the entire chip eight, it was a bit slow, but they'd managed to emulate it completely in HLSL, which is very similar to C. So he decided, you know what? Let's just go for it. So uh, there's an interesting anecdote in there about how shaders don't really do arrays, and you kind of need some arrays for the complicated math stuffs that uh, operating systems operating systems need to do uh, and you can't really debug a shader because most of the debuggers that exist are for visual stuff and that doesn't really help in this case so uh, it, he did lose me or they did lose me a little bit about the like really really technical programming stuff there was a lot of that and um, who would have thought yeah. in an argument <laughs> talking about building Linux, Linux, Linux and a shader. Sure, yeah. It's, yeah. It's a very, very uh, technical post, but if you're into that, go have a look. The code is up on GitHub. But yeah, no, uh, he or they emulated an entire RISC-V processor, and then they got Linux working on it. 
which is amazing. Jordan, <laughs> that so, is Jordan, just I, amazing. I believe we can recurse further. <laughs> oh yes. Well, no, well. No, see, now we got to run Docker in in the emulated <laughs> Linux so we can run another shit. Yeah. So I, I I got a question though. So since since we're at this point already, where we're just running out of shit to have Linux run on, when we finally unearth the Fargate, what will we get running on it first? Linux or Doom? Can it be Kitty Cat? That's Doom? my question to you. <laughs> kitty Cat Doom. Yes. I mean, it can be whatever Doom you want. It's like Sex, Kitty Cat, sexy kitty cat roleplay Doom. More Kitty Cat. Yeah. I mean, mm-hmm. in, uh, kitty, kitties with scaly wings. Listen, man, at the end of the day, I love psychotic weird <laughs> shit like this. And they did a fantastic job. It's just like, why? Drunk with power, like as you were. Keep going. It's amazing. Drunk, it, it drunk is on HLSL. Mm. <laughs> it is brilliant. Shaders, not even once. So it's time for our favorite segment, 30 on 30. Yep. 30 years of Linux means uh, someone decided, you know what? Let's just make a post on GitHub. Lee Riley, uh, that's their name, uh, uh, about the... 30 open source games that they felt like uh, putting it up there. And uh, there's quite a few that we've covered a lot. Uh, for me, the ones that uh, kind of jumped out were uh, Shattered Pixel Dungeon, which is now a complete full spin off from the original Pixel Dungeon. And outside of like Hearthstone, uh, Pixel Dungeon was the game that I played the most on my phones and tablets over the years because it's just a really good roguelike and it runs on everything. And the other one was Zero um, K. It looks really nice, and I'm pretty sure if I was into real-time strategy games, I'd probably play the crap out of that, because it looks really good. So, uh, th- those were the ones for me. <laughs> yeah, we, we, gotta, we gotta shout out some uh, LGC news section regulars like uh, SuperTox, OpenRA, WormSun. It's actually in the Steam news segment, but, you know, they, they're mm-hmm. an open-source game. And everyone's favorite QB controversy generator, Mind Test. Uh, there's also a part one and a uh, part two to the article as well. We only link part three in the show notes, but you can check all that stuff out. Um, but they uh, they run the gamut from NetHack to Stunt Driver, and it goes without saying, a lot of these open source games are labors of love. Um, and they actually have pretty solid gameplay if they're lacking in the graphics department a little bit. It's programmer, mm-hmm. what can you expect? <laughs> but if you're looking for something to play, I highly recommend checking out a couple of these because they are quite good and people do give a shit about them being good games. I just looked at your screen and I'm like, what the hell is that to your left? I'm like, oh, right. It's yeah, yeah, but yeah, the horse. Just, <laughs> it's Jen. Uh, there, 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 there's your cover. There's your cover picture for me. That's Have fun. Get us out of here. All right, coming up next, I make out with the horse off screen some more and we throw some chairs at Crater Crate. Welcome back to the Share Acquisition. This week, we're taking a look at Creator Crate done by Jory Ryan slash Creator Crate Games on the Unity engine. You can pick it up for about $12 US. What is it? A fast, chaotic, totally unique platformer with roguelike elements. Outsmart everything that wants you dead with your grabby robot arm. Rampage through a massive circular space station. Grab, stab, block, throw, and devour your enemies. More than run and shoot, create and imp- or improvise and create. Uh, we got to thank Jory Ryan for Jory Ryan, whoever for sending us keys. Jerry Ryan, seven of nine, or I don't, I don't know. I guess they were a little bored after Star Trek Voyager. <laughs> um, I guess, so, uh, let, 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 let's get into it, Ven. How'd you how'd you uh, get this working on Debian? Check it out, man. Debian eleven. I can just say that now. Everything worked out as intended out of the box. I was very happy to see that full screen window, all the resolutions. It's all there. No monkey business. Now, easy 60 at 1080p on the 2060. That's what you would expect. I didn't try it at 2160p, but I assume Jordan will fill you in on that keyboard and mouse. No problems there, along with the Xbox XS1 controller. Work like a charm. But let's talk about that keyboard and mouse, because effectively what we have here is a platformer that requires a key and mouse, Brad. Yeah. I tried it like that. I did. But, you know, I haven't played a platform with a keyboard uh, probably since the 90s. I, I, that, that's a real thing. Despite, like, multiple warnings, this game effectively tells you if you play it with a controller, it will jump out of your computer, kick down your back door, and run out screeching into the dark night. It won't. It really won't, man. Um, I used the controller after playing around with the keyboard in the tutorial. I'm like... I just don't like this. And insta better. The movement, jumping bits, uh, the graticule was flipping out though. Like the second you touch the right analog stick, it would just fly across the screen. Turns out if you disable the auto uh auto aim with that, it becomes very, very manageable. 
And uh, I took my controller. I redid the tutorial, figured out where all the buttons were, got the hang of things. And you know what? After doing that, it's kind of serviceable platformer-ish type game. As Jordan, before we went uh, live over the recording, you kind of mentioned you eat shit, you regurgitate things, you toss them around, bionic commando off a light or two, and then the gun shows up and things kind of fall apart. Well, they fell apart for me really quickly because guess what? Those scientists, they be packing as well. And uh, that gun gets in the way of jumping and trying to manage that while healing yourself and replicating things while in a firefight and aiming. Nah, that's about where I tapped out. I got about 65 minutes into it. Um, the only real complaint, if I was going to make one about this game, uh, you didn't do a ladder animation. That comes across like just right out of the box. I'm like, really? Why, why do you do that? You just like slide up the ladder. I don't know the why that bugged me, but it did. Uh, you know, it comes across for me as like a couple of neat ideas that never really quite got baked into a cohesive experience. But hey, look at this. 12 bucks. It has a demo. You go out and you decide, but as far as makes with the working, good job on that, sir. You get two chairs. Yeah, on Fedora 34 or 64-bit with the uh, R93900X and the GTX, or R93900, and the GTX 1080 Ti, I don't have that extra four cores, I wish. I wish. Um, yeah, I played the demo when they originally released it uh, for Steam Demo Days, just because we talked about it for the show. Uh, and yeah, from the demo, uh, no major regressions. It holds 68 UHD. The controls are way too twitchy, though. Uh, platforming with Waz doesn't ideal on the best of days, and um, it's a little sensitive when it comes to the mouse. Um, also, um, whatever you're holding can offset your center of gravity and whatever your little robot grips to. So it's fun getting stuck that way, especially when you're holding a gun. Um, soundtrack wise, it's kind of there. I didn't, there's no real like banger. It's got so some it's, wub and boops. It's, it's got some wub and boops, but like no, nothing, nothing too hardcore. Um, fun wise. I mean, as far as I can tell, the dominant strategy of this game is just to murder the fuck out of everything, reduce them to their component atoms, and then replicate the gun and cruise through by shooting shit. And, you know, I say that when you eventually get to uh, engage Roberto mode when they give you the knife, the gun is still easily the best thing you have in terms of dispatching, you know, enemies and being able to progress through the level. And here's the thing. It, it's competent enough Metroidvania by design with a bit of random, bit randomization tossed in because you lock in the map as you uh, do clear through the checkpoints, but that doesn't really imp impact the gameplay too much. I feel that's a bit of a missed opportunity where part, part of the game would have to be, uh, if, if you're, if you're going to lock into parts of the map later on, maybe hide some stuff there that you're going to need access to later. So part of it is like, especially for like a speed running aspect, can you get a good seed that, uh, lets you get through stuff a lot faster? I don't know. It's something to think about. Um, the uh, the HPMP system, it's stolen from Hollow Knight, but it's a good system, so I don't blame him for stealing it. And yeah, the, the physics are wonky. I get that it's kind of the point because, you know, you, you get further away from the center of gravity, things get lighter, you go closer, things get heavier. But it's, it's super inconsistent and like managing the drift, it, having the map be on a completely separate screen, screen is a little annoying too. Like, I, I don't know. There's a lot of quality of life options that I really wish they would have added to really enhance the gameplay. Uh, all in all, it's just kind of okay, right? There's good stuff, there's bad stuff, and it kind of evens out. So I'm just going to give it two chairs. Yeah, it is. Uh, it's, it, yeah. Uh, over here on the <laughs> Ryzen 7 3700X with the GTX 1080, I'll get to in a second. Uh, it does not hold the 144 FPS at 2560 by 1440, but... I think that may be because it's loading the physics of the entire map for the sake of the transition between the map view and the game proper view. They do, uh, and they give you an option to skip it, and I always skip it because it's a bit pointless. You either want to look at one or the other, not both of them in between -y while the thing is transitioning. Um, they do make a point of stating that the gravity is different depending on where you are in relation to the core of the space stations. Okay, that, that makes sense. Um... I didn't bother with a controller because I made it very clear as keyboard and mouse is recommended. And I, I can see why if you want to do any kind of precision stabbing once you get the knife in order to swing from place to place, you kind of need it. Uh, and it, the precision aiming often does save your life. Um, but you can rebind everything on a keyboard, so that's fine by me. Uh, I honestly couldn't tell you anything about the background noise. It did... 
I, I, I guess it was there, it was serviceable, but there's nothing to write home about, I think. But as for the fun, well, it's hard. It, 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 I had to forcibly put myself in the zone uh, to be able to make any progress because it, the game, there are games that put you in the zone just while you're playing it normally. This one, I had to actually do it to myself and just ignore everything else. Because what you don't see in the video are the five times I died before I could even get past the first gate after the tutorial. Thankfully, the areas in between the checkpoints are not so long and you can fail quickly and try again without too much time wasted. The like the new weapons and the new mechanics that are introduced as you progress, this section as most games tend to do. But um, the at least the first area while you're in the outer ring of the space station seems very much dedicated to teaching you how to how they work. Uh, you can tell once you've reached an area where you're just supposed to test your knowledge and they're not actually there to give you anything new uh, because the difficulty ramps up significantly and you're not told anything as to what you need to do. It's The, the game itself is not my jam and despite their attempt to justify the floatiness of the uh, platforming by putting you in a space station and the inconsistency of how far you jump by how far you are from the center of it, it the platforming didn't feel great. But it's not a bad game, so two chairs. <laughs> I don't. I don't know, Pedro. Do you feel be Would you have felt better if they gave you like some sort of indicator of what the gravity would be like on the main screen, so it's not so much guesswork and flipping back and forth? Like a map? little gauge to see. Yeah. It's like okay, you weigh this much or you weigh this much. It's like okay, then I can actually gauge just how far I, I need to jump. But no, 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 you don't get. Yeah. Uh, so it feels very inconsistent. <laughs> mm -hmm. It I, like I said, I, I think there's a. A lot of interesting mechanics, but it just didn't really stick in it. That's very difficult to do. When you think about it, I immediately thought of like when you're trying to do a bunch of stuff, uh, first game that came to mind is like Ori, where you're just stacking so much bullshit on top of itself. You have to have a very intuitive like control scheme. And mm -hmm. I don't think the movement and mouse or movement and swing about really encapsulates everything with re the refinement required to get everything you want out of this. Yeah, I, I I definitely found that like the item selection, especially when you have like multiple things in easy grabbing of you, will really just fuck you up. Oh, that just turns into yeah, poop out what you can. Yeah, yeah, it's like you hit a button. It's like okay, what what is that? Okay, I can just swing at it and hit the thing, and if it's a person, it gets knocked down. But yeah, it is. It gets closer, fucky. Real quick. Especially when you can grab onto enemies that you can't eat or throw. <laughs> yes, <laughs> like that. Those big robots. <laughs> yeah, there, like yeah. the. <laughs> yeah, it, it it gets again. There, I, I agree with Ben. The, the the there's good mechanisms there, but I think it needs a little more polish in terms of the implementation. Mm -hmm. Does that sound about right? That sounds about right. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Well, coming up next, we got some hate mail as usual. Yeah. You made it. We made it somehow. I I'm I'm, I'm still not entirely sure how that happened. By the power but hey, of a here we are. By the power of the Grayskull. One, because not the duet. That, that, that one's a bit broken. Uh, if you'd like to let me know how I can fix that one, uh, Ven's already given his suggestion, and I'm very, very tempted to Pedro, follow it. Pedro, uh, if you haven't in fact, learned anything, <laughs> try everything else, then do my suggestion. <laughs> That's the thing. I've already tried everything else. Oh. I don't so, know what so else to do. So now all you have so. left is Ben's suggestion. That's <laughs> pretty much. Yeah. <laughs> ah, process but, yeah, of elimination. If you, if you have your own suggestions, by all means, go to latestgamecast.com, hit the contact button, and let us know. Pick LGC Weekly as the show to send your hate mail to. Otherwise, uh, you can also leave us some feedback for the Wednesday show. Just pick LWDW. You can pick the other category if you're... I don't know, wanting to talk to us about literally anything else. You can ask Jordan for relationship advice. It's it, it it's fairly comprehensive, and there's some caveats that you may want to read at the top. Just you know, keep those in mind. But outside of that, we're all yours. And somebody read the instructions, so you know what? You get a free oh. free <laughs> shout out. Mikko wrote in. Check this out. So uh, it writes about Polygron. Is that Polycoron? Po po uh, Polycoron, yep. Po Polycoron. Hi, I'm the solo developer behind Polycoron, a minimal 3D sec. I've wanted to call it sex degree. Hey, six, <laughs> six degrees, degrees of freedom. Of freedom. 
arcade shoot 'em up. Uh, the game is currently in open beta testing. Expected to launch. And who's typing? My bad. Jordan okay. was. <laughs> the game is currently in open beta testing and expected to launch in coming months. I would appreciate any help in getting the games in the hand of more players. Uh, Polycron Poly- has developed 100% on Linux. So, Woo! Oh, very nice. That is over at fractilegames.com. There'll be a link in the show notes. Uh, let's, let's take a look. So, Oh, it's also available as an app. So you can yep. get it on Itch. It's on Itch. Google you can play. play it online. It's free. Just, yeah, download it. Give it a the, go. The, the, <laughs> there's a uh, there's a web version too apparently so so you got to think yep. about like if uh, somebody Dis- descent was made on an Atari Jaguar. Well, well an Atari, sure Atari Jaguar, Jaguar running Linux couldn't run this. <laughs> you- I'm pretty I'm pretty sure you could get the Atari Jaguar running Linux. I would I wouldn't bet against that. No, I, I I'm, I'm going to say, did you ever uh, play the Aliens game on the Jag? I never had a Jag. Oh. No, but I played the Aliens game on the Saturn. I, I could take a look at the Aliens game and see what the Jag was actually capable of if, for the one developer that used the uh, chips instead of the Mo- Motorola 6800 like everybody else. <laughs> <laughs> uh, all right, man. That's pretty but, dope. But hey, uh, yeah, if you if you want to come onto the show and talk about it, right? Like we're always willing to, or we always want to hear about developers making games on Linux, right? Yeah. That is the thing. Especially you, that development on Linux. You'd be doing better than the <laughs> other uh, <laughs> studio that wrote in using uh, the show uh, email address. And they're like, hey, again, uh, we're back doing this thing. Da, 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 da. We'd love to come on the show and talk about it. Of course, I went to Steam page, Windows only game. Ah, no, you can, you can play it on Proton. I, I hang on. I, I'm really tempted. Do you think we should just bring them on the show and like, not bring that up? Because they're clearly not watching. She's like, yeah, man, we love coming on. <laughs> See how long into the show before they start looking up like Linux game. Okay, mm, what are they? And we just keep an eye. You know, like, so, <laughs> how, do we, how do we get this launched? And, uh, yeah, yeah. I, I mean, it's, it's it's worth a shot. <laughs> they're they're I'll definitely not going to see this segment. So, <laughs> oh, that, that, that that would be horrible. And situations like that, uh, sometimes it's better just to be like, "Nah, man, it's all good." <laughs> so, <laughs> fee five fo fees. It's been a while since we pissed somebody off. Oh. Yeah. No. Since I'm the one who didn't get any hate from this one, I'm going to read it. Uh, Eman. Without the H. Uh, listening to Jordan mock Christians on your podcast frequently made me question if I should be listening to the podcast. He said podcast twice there. Uh, maybe I could podcast. stop listening to anything that he's co-hosting. Um, however, I decided to just stop listening because Ven is now for bid tech. Social media, Twitter, and the like. Is that what you make of it? They censor people on a whim. I'm out. I, I'm surprised. I'm genuinely surprised. I'm usually the one that gets all the hate. So what the fuck? My, my initial <laughs> reaction to this is like, <laughs> you don't seem like you're a very happy person. And also, it's a shame uh, that you're never listening. You're going to hear this because um, that that really sucks because you're never listening to us again. And, you know, if, if you did, that would make you a liar. You can't be a liar. Um, that's one of the commandments, isn't it? Uh, no, 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 actually, it's not. It is now. Lying is not in the Ten Commandments now. All right. Uh, you could uh, misinterpret a couple of them to mean that, but no. Well, I thought they were like 15 commandments, right? Well, I, I mean, they no, dropped the, five the, of them. There were like 30, but then... Uh, yeah, 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 no, I, I, the I saw History of the World Part 1, right? Like, I was supposed to give you these 15. Now, fuck, 10 that, that, that is as close to religion as we will actually get on the show, because one of the few policies we have is no politics and religion. So, um, <laughs> gonna call bullshit on that. Um, <laughs> I'm, I'm, and listen, if if I'm wrong, you know, you can, you can judge me from heaven, right? Yeah, I'll right. be burning in hell. I don't know, man. <laughs> when I read something like that, it's like, man, you get something else pissing you off in life. You do. Now, you might have been talking about, like, social media. Take a stab at me all fucking day. I don't care. I've been on the internet for 30 years, son. Um, I, I brought up on Wednesdays when it was just me and Pedro because we were talking about something I said, and some people have a problem with this when I brought up um, social media is 100% what you make it. Yes, it it's is. about who you follow. Yeah. It's who you follow. It's what your interest is. It's a direct reflection of who you are. And yet, see, some people have a problem with this. I, I, I disagree because while you can choose to follow people on social media, mm-hmm. other people can choose to engage with you. And yes, there are block buttons. There are automated block lists. But 
it, it, it is, it can be very difficult, especially with coordinated harassment campaigns. And there are a lot of them on the internet. I'm talking to, about you as an individual, Jordan. I'm not talking about, yes, you can exceptions to that, but the average, oh, it, the average person, I'm talking about somebody who has 1800 people following me. Yeah. And you're, you're someone who doesn't post a lot of controversial opinions and is a white man. So I don't know. There, there are a lot, there are a lot of people who are not those things who get a lot of unsolicited hate. And sometimes that spoils social media for them. Then maybe they shouldn't be on social media. Yeah. I mean, that's a lot easier said than done in this day and age. Not really. When I can walk out, walk into the fucking internet. Yeah. I mean, it's who you are. It's who you project. If you're trying to, if you're walking out on social media and you're stirring up shit, guess what? Shit's going to get stirred. That, but that is patently false. That is patently false. According to what? According to people who are routinely harassed on the internet for doing nothing. Like, then why are they being harassed? You don't do anything. Yeah. How no, do people know people people what you're doing people, or people who you will are? Ma- people will make innocuous <laughs> statements and then freaking brigades will come after okay, them. Okay, wow, now, now I'm Now I'm curious because you said people who are doing controversial stuff. I'm not talking about, is it controversial or innocuous? So I, so I didn't say, I didn't say controversial. You, you said controversial. I know you said people who make, I said, I said it's not, it's not just controversial stuff. You can be voicing any opinion on the internet and then a freaking harassment braid will come and fucking spam you. That's mm-hmm. just the thing that happens to people constantly. Yeah. And, you, and to and and to and to ignore the fact that that happens, and to ignore the fact that I'm not people who are often subjects of these happens. campaigns are being like targeted in real life as well. Like that's pretty fucked up. Yeah, it has nothing to do with anything I said though. It absolutely it absolutely does. The whole social media is what you make of a thing is fucking victim blaming horseshit. I'm sorry. I am not victim blaming, man. I'm saying for me as a fucking individual, you as an individual, it's what you fucking make it. And if you can't handle this shit, the blowback you get online, get your ass offline. Uh, well, Solution agree to, to agree, the agree to disagree then. Yeah. Man. As someone who lives with an artist who tried to do the Twitter thing for a while and got a lot of stuff thrown at her. Um, what about Instagram? She, that's the thing. She went to Instagram and that kind of pretty much fizzled out. So she made the conscious choice of just leaving Twitter and going to Instagram. Yeah. But, uh, but that's, that's the thing. Leave, uh, let, <laughs> Leaving the Facebook ecosystem is an enti- is an entirely different subject that does relate to this pretty strongly. I'm just saying that a lot of the times divorcing yourself from social media, especially if you are an artist who's relying on that art to make money, is kind of a non-starter. You just have to find a way to make it work. And yes, you abuse the block button and you abuse the mute button and you distance yourself as much as you can from it. It's going to be hard sometimes. There's always going to be assholes that rally other assholes to try and harass you. That's kind of inevitable. As uh, as someone who grew up in school with a fairly obvious physical defect and got bullied a lot for it, and sometimes ganged up on because of that, because kids are just fucking kids. Psychopaths. Yeah, they're monsters. Uh, it's you grow. You either grow a thick skin or you leave. Or I mean, you can you can invest in solutions that actually tackle the root cause. Like getting up and leaving isn't always an option. Sometimes you need sometimes you need a firmer hand. That's it. I, I'd say in social media, when it comes to Twitters and the other social media websites, yeah, that 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 so that up it and is leaving an is yeah, it is very much an option. So I guess, not, not, not if your business stuff. depends on it. But. Have a website. Yeah. May, you know what? Start, start control, a Tumblr. No, one's yeah, on, control no, no one is on Tumblr anymore, <laughs> so that's a good place to start up. Is Tumblr still around? Yeah. It is. <laughs> it's valued at like $3 million now, but it still exists. <laughs> so at the end of the day, man, um, yeah, hope you have a fun time, man, because yep. we're just going to continue being ourselves and we're going to have conversations. We're going to have arguments and it's not targeted anymore. We're going to disagree. Yeah. We're going yeah. to uh, poke fun at each other. That's kind of what we do after <laughs> nine years. Really? <laughs> really? <Lockstep. laughs> I don't know. I, I got the vibe from this of that old adage of like, if everyone around you seems like an asshole. <laughs> Maybe you're the asshole. Yeah. Uh, but if, if, if you can't tell who the asshole in the room is, it might be you. Yeah. Just yeah. maybe. I don't know, man. But I hope you rock on and you find some people that you agree with in lockstep so you don't have to worry about any of those pesky new ideas getting in your brain mates. Um <laughs> on that bombshell, we That that was a trip. Yeah, that was fun. 
We went places, finally. Yeah. We like a little bit of good hate mail. <laughs> Progress. Really? We're going to cue the music. If you want to get a hold of me uh, on the big, bad, evil Twitter, uh, I'm just at Vince Stone. I'm there, but hey, here's an option. Mastodon, you can do your own social media thing. Mass.LinuxGameCast.com. I'm just at Vin on that nonsense. I will be there. I don't have controversial opinions on Twitter. I just post <laughs> dumb jokes. You can see them at The Burning Fool on Twitter or when I occasionally stream on Twitch when I have time. Fucking now. Twitch.tv slash Burning Fool. Yeah, do tell me about not having time. I am Pedro Mateos. You can find me on Twitter at, at Unaccounted4. Uh, conveniently enough, that's the place if you're on social media, you'd like to get in touch with me, that's where you go. If you play games, um, Soapbox Race World at Unaccounted4 there too. So yeah, just ping me. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, it's been real. Kind of been fun. And it's been yes. long. Uh, let's roll them credits. <laughs> Oh yeah, yeah. It's it's like the expanse vision of the future. It's like, no, I don't want this. Why? Why right? is it happening? Ah, <laughs> uh, <laughs> there you triggered the bot. Uh oh. Well, we got to thank our party <laughs> patrons, the people making this possible, our advisors, Omegas, and our Theron, that guy who triggered our bot. Because he's spamming caps and our executive producers. <laughs> Aldius, Barb Ram, Scott Michaud, Mr. Fox Dog, Atomic Ass, Mike G, MT, Drummer 7, Holy Toast, and Kahaku. And our little Nikki fans keeping it strong. Representing Rodney Dangerfield, Darkwing, and Abstraction. We got sea monsters coming in your face. Jack B, Renault L, Ryder X, Machina, Truggy, Veritanuda, Justin Frostclaw, and Nobin. Ooh, with the Death Notes, Nova, Basil, Chad, Romeo, Marson, System T, Craig, Renee, Leonardo. Krasny, Kim, Smashly G, Chris, Stephen Jill, Benjamin, Doom 2.1, Stephen, Dirty Dean, back, Game of Tron. And of course, all the chairlings. Each and every single one of you it's is a awesome. Like Ryan of G, G, G. Mm, Mr. Mr. Amish. Tsunami of cheese. 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 <laughs> tsunami. Cheese Incredible tsunami. lyric. Cheese tsunami. tsunami. So do you want to look that Boil up on Urban? Hope. Jim. I want to look Catalytics. that up on Pornhub. I don't. Chris G? <laughs> All right, everyone, make We're your butt hold, hold up some heads, Jordan, so we can go back. Let's see if we can really sell out. Wait, hang on. Pedro, fucking participate, son. I am. No, you're not. I give up. I'll, I'll, I'll just cut Pedro on doing something. Don't worry. Just, just Dive put, just put in a picture of the five dudes.